Hi guys, welcome to this new section and welcome to this new lecture. This is live with you for essential motion graphics training. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to import files into your project. Actually, you will be just linking files from outside After Effects into your project. How to bring files inside After Effects? The first option is to come to File, go to Import and say File, or use the Ctrl I on the PC or Command I, I think, on the Mac. Cool, I don't like this option. What I like is come to the project panel, right click and say import and file. And that's pretty interesting. Now, hopefully you went ahead and downloaded your assets from the previous lecture and unzipped and you know where they are. So navigate to your assets here, Angry Bird asset. And let's choose two files here. One of them is JPEG, one, another one is PNG. Import as here, this is an option. We go and choose footage. We don't have any other option. Footage is anything that you bring into your project. It could be a video, it could be images, TIFF files, whatever it is. I will say import. And After Effects will bring your images inside your project. First of all, let's organize ourselves, and this is very important. It will make sense to create a folder that will contain only the images. For that, you can come to create a new folder, click on it and say images. Now, this is one way and then you take your images and you drag them inside the folder. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to select your images, drag them and drop them in the folder. Look, it turns blue and you call it images. That's an easier way and a more sophisticated way, you know. So now I have the two images. One of them is JPEG and here it shows me the name of the image and if you twirl down, it will tell me where it's used. Until now, it's not used. And the size of the image, 1280 by 720 pixels, this is the size of the image and the number of colors, of course, million of colors. If you choose the trans one, that is Angry Bird background transparent, it's a PNG one. It will also show me where it's used, nowhere for now, the size, the number of colors, and if it is interlaced or not. In this case, it's not interlaced and that's okay. I want to use these images inside a composition. One way to do it is to click on your image and drag it and drop it here on the new composition or drop it inside your layer or drop it over here. If you drop it here, it will create a composition. You notice the name came from the image that is exactly the size of the image. Now, I made this image 1280 by 720. If you look at your composition settings now, you will find the name is the name of the image. It is HDDV 720 by 25. This is a combination of the image size and the previous composition I have created. The 25 frame per second full start time code and 30 seconds come from the previous composition I created. If you click OK, now you have a composition inside the image folder, we'll remove it, that has exactly the same size as the image. If this is not the case, if the image is bigger or smaller, you don't want to create a composition that is equal to the size of the image. Let's delete this composition from the project panel. And let's create a new composition here. We call it Angry Birds, for example. Cool, that's fine. And we wanted 30 seconds, that's okay. 25 frames is okay. We click OK. We created a new composition. You can take your image, drop it here. You see the plus. You can adjust it, drop it anywhere you want. You can drop it in the timeline here, where it will center it in the middle of the composition and starting from the time zero. If you come here, you can decide, okay, I want to drop it at 10 seconds, five seconds or whatever. Let's drop it inside here. Okay, I centered it. So that's how you create a composition with the image or you create a composition and drop the image in. Let's delete this image and work with the second image. Notice that my composition has a background. Cool. But this image doesn't have any background. You notice how. I will take the image, click on it, drag it and drop it in the timeline. Now notice the background here is the background of my composition is not the background, you know, in the image. The image didn't have any background. How do I know that? Well, there is here toggle transparency grid. I can put it on like it is now or off. When I put it off or on, depending on how you want to see it, I can see the small squares, gray and white. It means the area here is transparent. I can put it on and it will show me the background of the composition. How do I know what's transparent and what's not transparent in an image? 
I will come to what we call here the channels. So these are the color channels. If you click on it, you can have red, green, blue, and alpha. Of course, we know about red RGB channels. The alpha channel is the transparency channel. If you click on it, whatever is white is 100% non-transparent. Whatever is black is 100% transparent. And whatever is in gray is somehow transparent. It has a level of transparency. Now, this is extremely useful. You can see what's transparent and what's not transparent. Of course, you can look how much red you have here. You notice the line is red. Let's go back to RGB. Let's create a shape. I will come to rectangle and just double click. It will create a rectangle, the size of the composition. No problem. I will take that rectangle and drop it behind. Now, notice I changed the background inside the image. Remember our image was transparent in certain area. Notice how it has affected the one that were semi-transparent or with a level of transparency. Now, what's beautiful about that? Okay, I will come to fill and choose linear gradient. Cool. Now I have the linear gradient here. You notice these two circles. They determine how the linear gradient is going to behave. If you take the first one, it'll determine where the colors are starting. Okay. Or the blue color, one of the colors. If you take the second one, it will decide where the other color. So obviously here I have a white and blue. Let's see that. If I click here, I have white, I have blue. It's so easy. It doesn't take a lecture. And here you are. You created a very nice background. As soon as you've done this, that's very beautiful. You don't want to keep these layers in your main composition. You want to pre-compose as a background. I will right click and say pre-compose. I call it background BG. And then adjust composition time. That's very important. So it takes the time of the main composition. I will click OK. Here we are, you created the background in a pre-comp. If you want to change the background, you double click on the pre-comp, delete the layer or add something else, do whatever you want. But the background has become independent. I will lock it and we move on to the next lecture where we learn how to import Illustrator files.